Greetings, welcome to this worship service. You can tell by the cover of the bulletin today is we're celebrating Epiphany. It doesn't technically happen until next week, but celebrate Epiphany when the wise men find the Christ child and declare him, declare him king. This is Sunday, December 31st, 2023. For those of you who aren't following social media where it's plastered everywhere, December is often abbreviated 12. Today is 3-1 and the year is 2-3. So it's 1-2-3-1-2-3 today. Yeah, those odd little things. The um, picture on the back side is a photo that I took of the steeple one day when a, a rainbow actually was marching across the sky. And I happened to be in the parking lot and snapped that picture. I thought it was um, a sign of, of good luck, of love, of remembrance, of, um, of good things. So today is a bittersweet day, um, nearly the beginning of the new year, the end of the old. And we are today recognizing the end of the ministries of this congregation, the end of its real life existence, I guess is a hard and fast way to say that. So, so we have much to go through, many emotions to go through today. And I chose the theme of Epiphany because the wise men come expecting one thing and living out one of their dreams and then leave by another road because they've been changed because they know there's danger ahead and, and where they were headed before and leave by another road. And we do that as well. We came here with some expectations, with some plans um, that were instituted, that were lived out, and missions that were, that were um, carried out as well. But we need to leave here, go by another road. But let's continue in our tradition and our congregational system, uh, celebrating our heritage by speaking together the words of the Salem Covenant. We covenant with the Lord and with one another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in all his ways, according as he is pleased to reveal himself unto us in his blessed word of truth. So in this epiphany, epiphany starts a season because it's the end of Advent, then epiphany, and then a season of, of epiphany after that. We're invited to look to the light as the wise men did, but also to journey with them and to find a Christ child who was born for everyone. And in the opening reading from Isaiah, we're going to hear Isaiah encouraging the people to take heart. For God comes in light, even in the midst of the darkness that is transforming the world. The first people to hear those words were um, returning home from exile, a couple of generations in exile, and they didn't quite know what they were going to find when they got back home. When the Babylonians <laughs> took captives and took over a new area, they would select the top 10% or so and take the business people, the bankers, the best farmers, the best of everything, and take them to Babylon, leaving the other people sort of leaderless, depending on the Babylonians to lead them. So buildings were knocked down that the Babylonians didn't want there, the temple, any worship space was gone, and the people who were left behind had little in the way of resources to rebuild. So when the exiles were coming back, remembering, you know how your memory builds those things up and oh, grandma's house always looks so beautiful and now it's, you know, it's an 1880s kind of rundown house, <laughs> which you forget about, who you didn't see before with those eyes. So they're coming back and they need some encouragement. Here's what Isaiah said to those people. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, 
and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather here. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters <coughs> shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. We've been celebrating this last season, Advent, the coming of the Christ child. <clears throat> Who was born on Christmas Day, the light that fulfills all the promises and the hopes that we had during the season of Advent. So that Christ is the light that has risen among us has come and brings completion to our waiting. Will you please join me and we stand if you desire for our responsive call to worship in the bulletins. The Magi came from many places following a star. We come to worship and the star sheds light on our lives. The Magi brought gifts to offer the child. We, we too bring gifts, ourselves, our hopes, and our dreams. Meek shepherds and mighty Magi, all were welcome in Bethlehem. We too come to Bethlehem and will return another way rejoicing. Our first hymn is number 229, The First Noel.
return back to the bulletins for our unison prayer of invocation. And join me, please. As a star shone in the heavens, O God, leading the Magi to the mystery of your love, so open your word to us. Enable us to delight in your light, that we may be filled with your love and yield our lives in service to you. Amen. You may be seated. I had the great gift of being able to go to Spain just before Christmas several years ago. And the weather was pretty much like, well, the last couple weeks have been in Duluth anyway, in the 40s, even up into the 50s. So we got to be outside and window shopping quite a bit. In fact, we stopped for ice cream and took down the patio tables that had been set up outside because it was so cold. And pretty soon there was a, a parade of cars circling the block looking at the strange Americans uh -huh. eating ice cream when it was so cold. It was pretty nice to us. But the displays in the windows kind of struck me in a couple of different ways. One, um, there were not so many little manger scenes in a stable with everybody gathered around the manger. There were some of that, but mostly there was a little bit of that and then a great space around and a path in the wilderness where the wise men are going to travel. And I asked about that and they said that in those Catholic Spanish speaking countries, they celebrate um, Three Kings Day or Epiphany much more than they celebrate Christmas Day. Christmas Day, Christ was born, Epiphany, he was discovered. They found him. And so they might give gifts on Christmas Day, but on the 12 days of Christmas leading up to Epiphany, that's when they celebrated. So people were out whitewashing their walls and setting up their displays in this time very, very close to Christmas. They found not only joy in the birth of Christ, but in discovering who he really was. And this, um, this birth, and the manner of it was foretold thousands, well, hundreds anyway, of years before that. So I'm going to read to you from Psalm 72. Camels pay, play a big part in today's reading, so you may hear that repeated again. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass that showers, that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life and precious is their blood in his sight. Some ideas in the people's minds about what they're hoping Emmanuel, God with us, will be. What the wise men are looking for. And we'll read in a moment from Matthew's Gospel that the wise ones have seen, nowhere does it say three, that just rhymes really nicely in a lot of our carols and our Christmas songs. Um, it just says that they came. Wise ones have seen signs in the heavens that a Savior was born in Israel. They've been paying attention to other cultures, to other, to other readings, to <clears throat> other faith um, religions. The Bible actually talks a lot about astrology 
and it requires close observation of the stars and the movement of the planets and, and significant mathematical ability. These people were indeed wise people. They were educated, they were observant. And in this telling of the gospel, the wise ones or the astrologists have knowledge of a mystery. They bring gifts that are symbolic. Most importantly, they trust their dreams. The first dreams brought them to the manger. The later ones sent them home by another way. And perhaps being drawn to and having seen the baby Jesus, not what they expected in a royal palace with, with gold and jewels around, but this very humble beginning, they um, cannot return the same way. Also, because they were changed, also they knew that King Herod uh, wanted to find out where the baby was and put an end to that child. They would leave and they would live by another road. And in Matthew's Gospel, which will continue, you may read at your well, the idea is that foreigners recognize Jesus first. Sometimes we're just so involved in what's going on and it just seems so ordinary and so backyard or next door that we don't, we don't see the significance. Matthew points out that it is others who see who Jesus is and what's going on. And it's important to understand that there's tensions between Matthew's community of those who were leaving Christ and those who were not, um, and, and that they, they needed to hear good words of encouragement. And we know that even today, Jesus and his message are, are um, not accepted by people that we might think might just take them at face value. So from Matthew's Gospel. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. So then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard this, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. They were wise. They were smart people. We don't know much more about those travelers than what I just read in that passage from Matthew. They were wise men or called magi, which is related to our word magic. So they could <clears throat> play tricks. They could create optical illusions and some suggests that maybe that's how they earned their um, money on the way on their travels was to do tricks or create illusions or to tell fortunes for people on the way. Um, I heard Reverend Kathy Nelson from Peace Church talk about this one time and she said, and don't scoff at those people who might have paid the wise men for their fortunes because how many of you read your horoscope in the paper this week or online somewhere? 
But they believed that this star would lead them to a newborn king, so they loaded up gifts for such an adventure and stopped to visit the reigning king, Herod. Herod was frightened and jealous and wily and insecure and uninformed. I mean, this was a star shining in the heavens, and he has priests and he has scribes and he has his own astrologers. Nobody noticed the star that was rising. But he hatched a plot to find and eliminate this newborn king who threatened his own position of power. So the wise men did find Mary and the child and offered their gifts. And yes, these were unusual gifts. They did not, they do give us clues about how Jesus is to grow and to change in his lifetime. Gold is surely a gift fit for a ruler of many people and nations, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings. Frankincense is used in the innermost rooms in the temple as an offering to God on high. So this surely is the gift for a priest. Myrrh was commonly used as an antibiotic as well as a burial spice. So surely this was a gift fit for a healer the one who would die for all people. And Jesus' story continues as his family flees to Egypt to live as refugees until it's safe for them to return home to Nazareth. This child was born not in a time of peace, but into a world that mingled politics and piety and scripture and sword. It's a world that's not unlike our own. We can read about the world in our news headlines every day. And when fear and suspicion stalk our world and violence and cunning seem the norm, we can still pray that the Prince of Peace will come, will remind us that this is not his way. We can pray for the courage also to seek diligently for where the Christ child is. We can ask for the inner strength to defy corrupt leadership, as did the Magi. It is this praying and knowing that we will find Christ for ourselves. They traveled at night to be able to follow the star. We can travel by starlight. We sometimes, though, stumble in that darkness. It takes a special kind of looking to determine if something in your path is an obstacle or a guidepost. Maybe you need to get really close to see that and figure that out. And when you travel by starlight, the journey is easier if you have companions to help you see what your eyes cannot. Different perspectives would help you determine what those items in your path are. We can pray to remember that when we seek the Christ child, we are never alone. And the wise ones carry treasures with them. But the real story, I think, is that they did travel, they did take the journey, they did trust their dreams, and they brought themselves and the wishes and the gifts that they had of their own persons. Maybe it was their lives that were the greatest treasure. And the secret about where Jesus was born that they kept from Herod, who saved him as well. God speaks to those who dare to dream, warning them of dangers, as of yet unseen, beckoning them to ventures yet untried. I see that you are all in that position today. Where are we going to go? We can't go back the same way we have gone before. We need to find another road. The light heralds that which transforms the whole world, calls earthly leaders to account and restores nations, as Isaiah foretold. Some see the light because they're yearning for it and have been looking for a long time, keeping their eyes peeled, so to speak. Some see it because it shines right on them. Oh, <laughs> they see, look at that giant star that we didn't see coming before. And some find the light because others bring them to it. Come and see, come and share what I have found. In whatever way we come to the light, we recognize it as the light of justice and salvation for everyone. 
as Isaiah said, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Amen. Let's sing hymn number 234, Wise Men, They Came to Look for Wisdom. <laughs> together we will celebrate the gift of communion in which Jesus brought centuries of people brought people together who were not necessarily families but were neighbors were were people who needed to have a community who needed to remember the past and to look toward the future with light so to the church in Ephesus a letter was written by Paul, um, and I'll just read from Ephesians 3, 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. Paul writes in long, long sentences and often refers back to what he's already written. So you have to go back and read it again. <clears throat> in former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery, hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. 
This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Because God sent Jesus to the world, we celebrate this communion meal together and remember how God has been a saving grace throughout history and will be into the future. So we can share our own joys and concerns at this time, and I would invite you to share what is on your mind, on your heart today. Yes. Oh, you go first. No, I'm not, I just have my hand raised. I'm sorry. Oh, you do? I'm sorry. Yes. I, just, I just have lots of birthdays, people that like to. Okay. <clears throat> a young lady is about to be a first mom on January 2nd. Um, I'll hold her and her baby up in her prayers and she's struggling to find health care and she's working full time and all that sort of thing. Okay. Um, Donald and Jim and Martin and just all these folks, my old uh, younger brother, he'll have his birthday next Saturday. Just, so I think of that, I love birthdays, I think of them as joy, especially a young mom and her first baby. Just, Mm. All of that come together joys and concerns. <laughs> okay, for those who are celebrating birthdays, for those who care about them and want to make it special for them, for those, um, especially a friend who is expecting first child, a new a life boy. at this a boy at this time um, of year when all is darkness and quiet, and then to know and and covered in snow finally to imagine, anticipate new life and change in the world <clears throat> with gratitude and with hope for peace. God, in your grace, you, you hear God. our prayers. I lift up my gratitude for the people who have made this ministry here um, a reality, even in the times and especially in the times when we could not meet together because of COVID and other illnesses, I want to um, lift up my gratitude for Carrie, for her time when I was here for the last four and a half years, but also for some 17 before that, that she has taken care of you and your paperwork and your, um, your bookkeeping and all of that. So with gratitude for you and your gifts and your sharing for Greg, who's helping us through the closing, all of the nitty gritty details that we need to take care of. For Robert, who's been videoing, but only after um, Susan Smith did for a long time and Barb did for a long time. Um, gratitude for their skills and their patience in doing that. And for our musicians, for Carolyn and for Emma, who've been here every week um, to offer their gifts of music and uh, accommodation for those of us who can't sing as high as the hymns are, but for being here and, and sharing their gifts of music with you. Um, for all of you who have been here for since the beginning, many of you of this, of this congregation, of this building, of this land, who have kept it going, kept it in your hearts, kept it in your prayers, for all of this time. Um, even as we come to the end of that time, it doesn't mean that God's ministry is done or that God is done with you, but there is much to be grateful for, the gifts that you have shared here and the gifts that you will share as you find a new home. With gratitude, with thanksgiving, oh God, in your grace, you, you hear our grace. prayers. Yeah, I prayed for one thing, right? My own personal, selfish, please don't let it snow until January 1st. I gotta get back from the cities from a Trans-Siberian Orchestra concert, which started at 7.30 last night, which didn't get out till after 10. And we needed to get back up here so I would not miss this final service. And we got back at four this morning. <laughs> so, because of the snow, they came a day early, but... Thank you, God, that we were safe anyway. Yes, so with gratitude for that safety. Oh God, in your grace, you hear our prayers.
Let's bow our heads for a prayer of confession and then I'll offer you some time for silent prayer. O God of forgiveness and of grace, hear our confession both of sin and of faith. We confess the sin of wanting new life while holding on to the old. We confess that we have brought into this new year resentments and hurtful habits and attitudes from the past. We confess that though we wouldn't mind being a little more loving, more patient, more understanding, we really do not want to be moved to radical newness. And yet we confess also a faith in your acceptance and forgiveness and power to make new. So confessing both our sin and our faith, we ask that you renew us where we have opened ourselves to your grace, that you accept us where we think we are not able to change and that you forgive that which we have chosen not to change. We ask this through Christ who hears us, even as we pray our silent prayers lifted up to you. Hear us as we pray. God, we thank you that Jesus came to live with us to bring hope in times of fear, to bring peace in times of danger, to bring joy in times of darkness, to bring love, your love, in every time. Although poor, Jesus was rich in you and taught us to share our wealth. Though often without a home, Jesus always lived in you and taught us to welcome everyone to every table. Though living in a time when many people felt lost and confused, Jesus showed us all the way to your realm. Help us to continue to strive to live as he did, to live out his message, to live out his dream. And hear us as we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples and us to say together with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In our remembering, I'm looking at the clock and knowing that um, our time is limited this morning. Emma needs to move on to another church for her service there. So we're not going to sing, sing a song of Bethlehem. But you know the story of Jesus born in Bethlehem and growing up as a child. We don't know anything until he was 12. And then when he was 30 in the temple and his life, his ministry and his death and resurrection before us. Even when we don't understand the words of life and light, Jesus loved us, knew all of us. Lost sheep, lost coins, hidden treasures. On the night before he died, Jesus took supper with his friends and took bread, blessing it, breaking it, and passing it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This bread represents my body, which will be broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, do so, remembering me. And at the end of the meal, he took the cup. A cup of sweet blessings, a cup of remembrance of the good things that could be cup of community and he blessed it and he passed it to his disciples saying take and drink all of you this cup represents my blood which will be spilled for you it is the cup of forgiveness of your sins it is the cup 
of blessing. It is the cup of the new covenant. Take and drink, all of you, and remember me. Let us pray. With this bread and this cup, we celebrate the birth and life of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you, O God, in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, and make them holy, so that we, your people, being fed by holy things, may share hope and peace and joy and love with the world, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, now and forever. Amen. I will come and pass first the plate down your row, take a piece of bread, and eat it when you are ready. I will follow with the cup. Um, again, drink it as you are ready, and put the cups back in the tray holders. to accept our whole lives. We're invited to share what we have through the generosity of many people over much time. We're going to be able to help many people with our offerings. Thank you for all of that. And with gratitude for all that we can do, gratitude for all that we have done. Let us sing our doxology. Praise God for star heated by wise travelers long ago no longer leads the way the manger born christ is still to be found and followed we are not brought to our knees in surprise as were those journeyers of old yet our desire to worship can be as deep as theirs and though we do not bear gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh we offer ourselves and what we have the story continues Good news abounds. There is a living Christ to discover, to worship, and to serve. 
Let us rejoice and be glad. You have an insert in your bulletins that recognizes this ending time. There is a transfer of the church property, um, ending an authorized ministry, and disbanding the congregation. So the insert has words for all of us. Excuse me. It was exciting to see people in the pews today. Maybe not what you might remember from the old days, but um, voices are stronger. Uh, many of you who are grown-ups now were here, were those children in the good old days who filled the pews. You were the reason the education wing was added. You may have played games in the fellowship hall downstairs. I know some of you chopped the trees down to make room for the building here. You were the reason that this, this church has been here for 65 some years. Um, if people know that you're available, I hope that you will get invitations from other churches to join them. It's going to be different because it's not this. You'll have different hymns and you'll have different preachers and you maybe will have chairs instead of pews in the sanctuary and you might have screens instead of just one person up reading before you. But I suggest that you not stay away too long. As I said, you need a community, and those communities out there need you and your gifts and your talents and what you've been able to share here. So, the time has come for this congregation of Christ's Holy Church under God's leadership to disband and to take leave of this building. It has been consecrated for the ministry of God's holy word and sacraments. It has provided refuge and comfort to God's people. It has served well our holy faith. And it is fitting, therefore, that we should take our leave of one another and of this consecrated house, lifting up our hearts in thanksgiving for this common store of memories. I'm going to ask Barb or Phil, if you would come up and read the litany of thanksgiving to lead that. <clears throat> I need to go be back in a moment. Okay. Blessed be the name of God, whose word has long been proclaimed within this hallowed place. We give you thanks, O oh God. As generations have prayed their prayers and sung your praises here, your spirit has blessed countless worshipers. We give you thanks, thanks O oh God. We have celebrated the Lord's Supper here and been nurtured by it through our journey in faith. We, we give, give you thanks, thanks O oh God. We have rejoiced here as believers have confessed faith in Christ. We, we give, give thanks, thanks O oh God. God. We have baptized here we have baptized our children and mourned our dead. We give you thanks, O God. As new families have been created through marriage, we, our parents and our children, have vowed at this altar to love, honor, and cherish always. We give you thanks, O God. We are comforted to know that others are sharing a faith journey here. We give you thanks, O God. As we go now from this house into a further journey of faith, we give, give thanks, thanks, O God, God through Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read. Our church family is constantly changing. People come and go. Babies are born. Children grow up. People commit themselves to one another. Loved ones and friends among us come to the end of their lives. Individuals move into our community and church life. Others leave us, moving away to new places, new experiences, and new opportunities. It is important and right that we recognize these times of passage, of endings and beginnings. Today we share the time of farewell with our pastor. 
In May of 2019, the Duluth Congregational Church called the Reverend Sherry Daniel to serve as pastor and teacher. <clears throat> Where are we? Right oh, yeah, okay. Well, I thank the Duluth Congregational Church, the members and friends for the love and kindness and support shown me these last four and a half years. I ask forgiveness for mistakes I have made. I'm grateful for the ways that my leadership has been accepted. And as I leave, I take with me all that I learned here. We receive your thankfulness Offer forgiveness and accept that you now leave this ministry. We express our gratitude for your time among us. We ask your forgiveness for our mistakes, your influence on our faith, and faithfulness will not leave us as we part. I forgive you and I accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. I have to go. You can to finish. Okay. Do you? the members of the Duluth Congregational Church release Reverend Sherry Daniel from the duties of pastor and teacher. We do, we do. with the help, help of God. God. This congregation, named Duluth, the Duluth Congregational Church, was organized as part of Christ's Holy Church. It was God's gift for a season. We are thankful for the many ways it has served the mission given to it by Jesus Christ it has accomplished its purpose. We declare that it is no longer a formal congregation and is now disbanded. Christ's Holy Church is of God and will be preserved to the end of time for the conduct of worship and the due administration of God's word and sacraments, the maintenance of Christian fellowship and discipline, the edification of believers, and the conversion of the world. We remain part of Christ's ongoing church, and as we scatter into other congregations, we shall be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Amen. I think we should sing uh, hymn 84. Which is all There is a time and a season for everything, a time to gather together, and a time to depart. 
a time to make promises and a time to bring those promises to life, a time to receive and a time to share what we have received. We go living in the love of God, made bold by the call of Christ and empowered by the Spirit to embrace the years ahead. Amen. coffee right now. So please come down into the lounge and join for a coffee hour.